What's up, everybody? Back again with another reaction. And next up, I got the game gaming's creepiest urban legends. So it's from the uh, channel Games Radar. So I'll leave the original link in the description below. But I uh, I can already tell you one uh, urban legend that's probably going to be in here, and it's probably the whole you know Lavender Town thing from Pokemon about how kids would would uh, hear the theme and like commit suicide or something like that. So, but I. Uh, Anyways, let's get it. Hey folks, David from Games Radar here. Over the past decade or so, as the gaming community has become more connected, a peculiar set of stories and rumors have bubbled to the surface. Most are pretty silly, but sometimes they're not so much silly as they are absolutely terrifying. Now, some of these yarns are so far-fetched they debunk themselves, but every so often one turns out to be true, and in doing so, lends a sliver of credibility to all the others. It makes you wonder, what if? Set aside your doubts and open your mind to the macabre possibilities these stories posit, because you never know. More than just a corrupted Morrowind mod. Deep in some long-forgotten hard drive lurks a mod for the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind with an insidious secret. At first glance, the mod, jvk1166z.esp, is nothing but a broken, save-corrupting mess. However, one intrepid user was able to run it properly, and gradually became obsessed with understanding the mysteries hidden within. Most of our information about the mod comes from this lone source. In this altered version of Morrowind, nearly every mission-critical NPC is dead, and your character is endlessly hounded by an enigmatic creature referred to as the Assassin. There's a sealed door at the bottom of an excessively difficult dungeon, and every remaining NPC states watch the sky when approached. One lone user eventually discovered the night sky in the mod mirrors our own circa 2005, and was convinced some celestial event would unlock the sealed door. They were also certain the assassin wasn't just stalking their character. A text adventure exposed a California murder. Pale Luna is an enigmatic text-based adventure game in the vein of Zork and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's also nigh impenetrable. Your quest begins innocently enough. You are in a dark room. Moonlight shines through the window. There's some gold, a shovel, and some rope nearby along with a door to the east. Attempting to use the shovel results in not now while using the rope gives you an ominous, you've already used that. Gradually, players head east into the woods, where they endlessly cycle between the four cardinal directions. Your only companion is Pale Luna, whose message repeats, Pale Luna smiles wide. After a great deal of trial and error, one player managed to solve this maze, and received a set of longitude and latitude coordinates for his trouble. But when he traveled to that point, located in Northern California, Pale Luna's sinister intentions were revealed. Secret of Evermore originally had a much darker tone. When your game stars a Marty McFly lookalike, a transforming dog, and is filled with cheesy B-movie references, it's hard to take things too seriously. Such is the backdrop of Secret of Evermore, a 1995 role-playing game for the SNES that married JRPG action with a distinctly American sense of humor. But was this always the case? Games can change a lot during development, and according to one source, Evermore changed drastically before its final release. Supposedly, the game had a much darker story and tone, remnants of which can still be found in the final game, most notably in the foreboding opening title crawl. But the best evidence of an alternate Evermore comes from a single marketing screenshot with a dialogue box. How can you live with what you've done? Those poor children. This line doesn't appear in the final game at all, and there's no context for what it could be referencing. It's crazy. The haunted NES Godzilla game is more real than you realize. In this twisted version of Godzilla, enemies take on strange new appearances, bizarre personality questions are posed to the player, and gradually the author who wrote the original account of the game becomes convinced the game is speaking directly to him. A massive screenshot gallery corroborates his claim, showing off the game's corrupt, pixelated horror. But 
this is just some flight of fancy, right? Pure fiction? Not anymore, thanks to developer Yuri Neri, who is working on turning this internet horror story into a reality. More than just a ROM hack, NES Godzilla Creepypasta is a complete rebuild of the original game that incorporates the same plot points and imagery of the original story. Of course, whether or not the game will channel the spirits of your deceased loved ones remains to be seen. I don't want to. I don't want to find out. Neither. He predicts the future. This legend revolves around the in-game radio in Fallout 3, which apparently predicts the future. If you kill the host of Galaxy News Radio and then destroy Raven Rock, GNR begins to transmit heavily coded transmissions. These transmissions feature three dogs sadly reading off numbers before tapping off some Morse code. First, it predicts the time and date of Gary Coleman's death. Then it rattles off the following gems. The Queen has died today. The world mourns, as on days like these we are all Brits. Or, I can't believe Britney's actually won an Oscar, along with the accompanying dates. It's turned out to be a hoax because clearly these dates have passed and Her Majesty the Queen is still with us. Still, it was a fun story and some of the later entries are downright chilling. I mean, imagine Britney Spears winning an Oscar. Kill Switch doesn't even exist anymore. Experimental gaming is all the rage these days. But such was not the case in 1989 when the Carvina Corporation released Kill Switch. The story goes that the adventure game had a fairly limited run in the late 80s, releasing between 5,000 and 10,000 copies, and had players choosing between two different characters, a wounded, shape-changing woman or a powerful, invisible demon. The story followed an uprising of miners, weird ancient evils, and other super strange stuff. Oh, and the game has a tendency to erase itself. What? Completely. Like, there are supposedly no playable copies left. That alone is fairly creepy, but it's the recent developments surrounding Kill Switch that propels it from mildly strange story about a weird Russian game to rocking back and forth and crying. Apparently, one sealed copy of the game was found in 2005 and sold for $733,000 to a Japanese man named Yamamoto Ryuichi. He intended to post gameplay footage of it in order to finally bring it to the world, but only one clip has reportedly surfaced. It's a video of a ragged looking Ryuichi sitting in front of his computer and crying. That footage too has since vanished, or never really existed at all. Minecraft is being haunted by a ghost named Herobrine. Oh God. Minecraft's massive community has cooked up dozens of urban legends. None, however, are as popular or weird as the existence of Herobrine, the creepy, eyeless version of Minecraft's protagonist. There are different theories surrounding Herobrine, defining him as a glitch, a virus, or a manifestation of not just Dead Brother, who travels around single-player games building small tunnels and pyramids. One of his first appearances was in a live stream, where a player saw him in the middle of a lava field. His stream crashed and redirected viewers to a picture of Herobrine. The page's source read, It has been reported that some victims of torture during the act would retreat into a fantasy world from which they could not wake up. In this catatonic state, the victim lived in a world just like their normal one, except they weren't being tortured. The only way that they realized they needed to wake up was a note they found in their fantasy world. It would tell them about their condition and tell them to wake up. Even then, it would often take months until they were ready to discard their fantasy world and please wake up. Arcade Cabinet Polybius was a government test. The year was supposedly 1981 when Polybius appeared in a few arcades around Portland, Oregon. The Tempest-like game was said to be extremely entertaining and highly addictive, causing lines of people waiting to play and occasional fights to break out over who got to play next. How did that Men not cause a seizure? Were seen hanging around areas with Polybius machines, and they'd occasionally collect some sort of data from them. Even weirder is that players were said to suffer from a suite of medical problems after playing it, ranging from amnesia to insomnia to even committing suicide. Damn! Some reported that the game featured subliminal messages, alluding to the idea that it was some sort of government test. Since then, there hasn't been a single cabinet of Polybius found, and while some have said that they've worked on the game, and others have attempted to recreate it, no one has been able to prove it even existed. Earthbound's final mission has you perform an alien abortion. For silly as Earthbound, heard about this. one thing is consistently serious, Gygus. The evil alien entity is hell-bent on destroying the world, and the game's heroes are sent in a time machine to defeat Gygus when it's at its weakest. It's never fully explained, but a lot of people think you're sent back in time to basically perform an alien abortion. 
Back in time, the team is now represented by robots who fight their way to a weird pink level that looks eerily organic. Gygus is represented by a miasmic blur that looks like a flashing red ultrasound, and it babbles incoherently as you damage it. Oh, and Earthbound's creator Shigesato Itoi has confirmed that the battle was inspired by traumatic childhood experience when he walked into the wrong movie theater playing a murder mystery called The Military Policeman and the Dismembered Beauty and witnessed a very disturbing scene. Lavender Town's music caused Pokemon players to kill themselves. There we go. I knew Supposedly, it. in 1996, there was a sudden string of illnesses and suicides in children ages 7 to 12 in Japan, and Pokemon was to blame. No, it wasn't because they were upset that they didn't get the version they wanted. Apparently, things went bad when the players arrived in Lavender Town, the game's haunted, ghost-filled area. The music here included strange, high-pitched noises that weren't audible to adult ears and only affected children. Since Nintendo employed only adult playtesters, no one noticed until children started killing themselves. It's reported that at least 200 kids died after hearing the Lavender Town tone, with countless more reporting headaches. In 2010, someone who analyzed the tone revealed Unknowns, a second-generated Pokemon that spelled Leave Now because apparently children killing themselves over incredibly creepy song wasn't disturbing enough. Oh, and adding fuel to the fire, the music was changed in the US version with no reason given by Nintendo. Squall dies midway to Final Fantasy VIII. Of all the games in the series, Final Fantasy VIII carries with it the most absurdly disturbing urban legend. This one revolves around an event that takes place at the end of Disc 1, where Squall's team fights Edia on a parade float. After the battle, Edia fires an ice shard through Squall's chest, causing the emotional hero to tumble off the platform. Many believe that it's here that Squall dies. There's even an entire website devoted to the theory, and that the rest of the game is his near-death dream as he plummets to the ground. After being impaled, he wakes up in a prison, shocked by his lack of wound, and it's never again addressed. For the rest of the game, things go from mildly realistic to silly and nonsensical. Squall is thrown into a world-saving mission full of moon creatures and power fantasies. Even weirder is the final boss battle, which sure looks like someone slowly dying. We see flashes of scenes from earlier in the game, blurred images of his love interest, and eventually a random shot of Squall with a giant hole where his face should be. If you're looking for more creepy, weird, and interesting videos like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and as always, head on over to GamesRadar.com for the latest gaming news, reviews, previews, and updates. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I, just like I said, I knew that that Pokemon and Lavender Town one was going to be in there because you know, but I thought you know, I mean they say it's a myth, but uh, you know who knows. But uh, anyways, so yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know what y'all thought. If you liked this video, remember like and subscribe. Thanks.